Facebook gives us, because we're using their API, is a huge array of all of the IDs of all of your friends. And we can then use those IDs to look up your friends' names and profile pictures and their courses as well. So if nothing else, if you're just curious as to what Facebook actually makes available to people, you can play around with their tutorials online. And see just how much information is being shared, and frankly, how, many,、um, how much data even we have on you just because you've logged into your Facebook account. So, that little warning that either freaks you out or you completely ignore and just click OK these days, I mean, it's actually your consent to giving websites a whole bunch of data about you in machine readable format,、um, as we'll see quite soon. Any questions? Feels like a tough crowd today. Why don't we take our five minute break here? All right. Oh, it feels like we definitely have a dead feel today. So I'll try to tell a scary story toward the end that、um, affects your pr-、uh, privacy and security. All right.、Um, <laughs> all right. So, and don't wake that person up in the green there today. <laughs> tell her I say hi. All right. So,、um, <laughs> okay. So, we promise that there's this feature to store data. In the server, even after a user has gone from one web page to another and that icon has stopped spinning.、Right? We mentioned on Monday that HTTP is stateless, which just means that you don't maintain a persistent connection to the server usually. Rather, you、um, have to click on a link or submit a form to actually go from page to page. Now, there are some exceptions to this. Facebook itself right now actually uses a lot of something called AJAX, which means a lot of JavaScript code is constantly querying the server saying, Do I have a, a, an instant message? Do I have an instant Message, do I have a status update or the like? So, not all websites do this, but most websites do actually not maintain、uh, state unless you do, do not maintain a persistent connection to the server. But suppose we want to do that. Let me go ahead and open up a file called、uh, counter.php and gedit. And this is a very short program among this week's code. That looks like this. At the very top, I've got some comments, and then I've got this new function that you may have seen in problem set seven, but just taken for granted called session start. Session start is simply a function that PHP uses to tell the web server, give me access to a special global variable called. Dollar sign underscore session. This is another associative array inside of which you can put anything. For instance, the contents of someone's shopping cart, their user ID to remember that they've logged in, any data that you want to persist from page load to page load. And frankly, any website that has users logging in these days uses sessions so that again, the icon can stop spinning and the connection can close so that this is partially for scalability's sake. If you go to Amazon.com, it might take a second or two to download the whole web page, but you, the human, might spend Five seconds, a minute on that web page, and it would just be a waste of resources to have your browser constantly connected to the web server for all of that minute. So instead, the browser disconnects, you see the content, and then you can click something or submit something to actually get more content. So session start ensures that even if this user disconnects, and frankly, even if this user closes their laptop lid, walks across campus, then goes back to their dorm and opens the laptop lid, then it's going to still remember who you are and that you're. Logged in, right? It's relatively rare that you need to re log into Facebook and other sites because they're remembering that you're logged in, especially if you click that little checkbox that most sites have. So, this line of code just means give me access to dollar sign underscore session. So, what am I doing next? Well, we've seen the isSet function before. It just says, is this variable set? Does it have a value? And I'm going to say, if isSet, dollar sign underscore session, quote unquote counter. So, if this variable has been set, what do I want to do? I want to grab its value, and for reasons we'll see in a moment, I want to store it in a variable called dollar sign counter, all lowercase. Else, if this variable is not set in the session, that is, we've never seen this user before, go ahead and initialize this counter variable to. Zero. Now, down here we have dollar sign session quote unquote counter gets counter plus one. So, this is a counter in the literal sense. We're doing plus one, plus one, plus one every time this code is executed. That is, every time this page is loaded. What does the page do? It's actually very simple. You have visited this site some number of times. And I'm kind of re- regressing back to week two or three where I cut grammatical corners, but so be it. The point here is that I'm outputting the counter value. So let's open this up. Let me go ahead and open up Firefox. Let me go back to localhost in John Harvard's account and then open up counter. 
And OK, I visited the site zero times. Let me zoom in. Let me go ahead and hit reload or Control R one time, two times, three times. And this will very quickly get boring. But notice at the very top of Firefox, it is connecting to the server and then disconnecting. So it's apparently remembering somehow that I've been here before. Now, this is a simple example, but in real websites like Facebook and the like, it just remembers that you've logged in. That user 6,545 is logged in so that they don't have to pester me on every page. Give me your password. Give me your password. Or in the case of Amazon, so that they don't forget as you go from page to page what's already in your shopping cart. So you could put product IDs, not user IDs, in a shopping cart as well. So let's see this, how this actually works. Let me go ahead and open. Up. Uh, let me first go ahead and clear my cache. And so, this too should be a good habit to get into when doing anything web related, when writing software, to clear your browser's cache constantly, just so that if you already changed some code on the server, but the browser didn't realize for efficiency reasons, this way you're telling it to re download the code. So, I'm going to go ahead and clear now. I'm going to go ahead and open up Firefox anew. And I'm going to visit this URL, but before I hit enter, I'm going to click this guy up here. So, pre installed in the appliance is that Firebug tool. If I click this, it's going to open here at the bottom. And what I'm going to do is scroll not to the HTML part this time, but to this tab, the Net tab. So, by default, it's off for performance. I'm going to click Enable the Net tab. And now I just get another tab whose purpose in life is going to be to sniff all of my HTTP traffic, very similar to what that live HTTP headers plugin did a while ago for us. So, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter. And voila, apparently I've only visited one web page. It's called counter.php. It used HTTP GET, so there was no POST involved. It was on this server called localhost. The file that came back was 140 bytes. The IP address that it's on is apparently 127.0.0.1. That is the numeric synonym for quote unquote localhost. And port 80 means the web server. That's all. So we're seeing all these fundamentals here. So let me go ahead and expand this thing, and we'll see exactly what was sent from client to server. So let me scroll down here the request headers. So, in addition to sending that get request, It included my browser all this information the name of the server it's contacting, the user agent, which is the browser. So, this cryptic string uniquely identifies this version of Firefox on this version of Fedora Linux. Then there's some slightly uninteresting stuff about what the browser supports.、Um, and it also mentions here oh, I accept gzip. So, one way. That web browsers and servers save time is they compress information, HTML, on the fly automatically. So, this is the browser's way of saying, hey, I can support compression if you want to compress the responses you're going to send me. So, what did the server send back? Well, here are the server's headers. The server announces the date and time in Greenwich Mean Time here.、Uh, this mentions it's what server software we're running. It mentions the version of the server software we're running,、um, which is actually a potential security hole, but in the appliance, we leave everything on for debugging purposes. This is also a potential security concern. The server is also very freely saying, By the way, I have PHP installed. Moreover, I have PHP 5.3.8 installed. Why is this probably not the best practice for a server in general to do this, security wise? Yeah. So it's saying you could inject code potentially. So, one, you're obviously revealing that you're running PHP as opposed to other languages. And it's not always obvious from the URL.、Um, two, suppose that there's some bug d- d-、uh, discovered in PHP's interpreter. And so some big announcement goes out on the internet on various email security lists and says, hey, everyone beware, PHP 5.3.8 is buggy. You, there's this security hole in it. Here's how people can take advantage of it. So be sure to update. Well, the whole world is not going to update instantaneously. So all the bad Guys have to do now is troll around on the internet looking for IP addresses of web servers that say, hey, I'm running that buggy version of PHP. Here is you know, my proclamation thereof. So, this bad practice in production servers, but for development purposes on an appliance, it's OK in this case. But here's the magic. Set cookie. So, you might generally know that cookies are some kinds of files or information planted by web servers on your browser. How is that done? Literally as simple as this. When you request any web page from a server, A response comes back that includes all of this juicy information date and time, server name, and so forth, but also potentially an HTTP header that literally says set cookie, and then it gives the cookie a name 
and a value, and then potentially some other details. So, what's really happened here is that PHP, thanks to the session start function, has automatically sent a cookie to my server, to my browser, called PHP sesh ID, which is just the convention, and then a big crazy value of this. And this is essentially a pseudo random string that's ideally supposed to be unique, associated and given only to me. So, henceforth, the connection closes, and there is no spinning icon or anything. I visited the website zero times, but notice if I reload this page now, and let me collapse this back to just one line. If I reload this page, it does indeed say at top left, I've now visited one time, but let's now look at this request. In this request, in the request header, Notice what my browser has perhaps presumptuously sent to the server. It's sending not a set cookie header, just a cookie header. And so my browser is saying, hey, by the way, the last time I visited you, you gave me a cookie called PHP sesh ID, and here is the value that it was equal to. So you can think of this as a hand stamp at like an amusement park or a club where they stamp your hand to indicate that you've paid or that you're 21 plus. And if you're ever asked this question again, you don't have to take out your ID or your ticket. You instead just show your hand stamp. And this is really what's going on with cookies. You're saying, I've been here before. I've been here before. And what's stamped on your hand is this really big number because what the web server then does is it stores in its own database that big number and associates with that big number. The contents of dollar sign underscore session. So, that big associative array in which you can put user IDs, friendship IDs,、uh, shopping cart contents, it's stored somehow on the server and it's associated with that big number so that the browser and server in the future assume that anyone who presents this number must be the guy that I gave this number to in the first place. And so, voila, let me let you pass. So, Works really nicely, right? And it doesn't require that you maintain a constant connection to the server. It doesn't require that you physically remain in the amusement park or club. You can get back in just by showing this hand stamp. So, where is the opportunity for bad guys now? 